I'm John Lee. I teach social theory at University of California, Berkeley. I wrote a book called K-pop, which is an analysis of globally oriented South Korean popular music industry. And I wanted to uh, understand how South Korean case is different from or similar to the Japanese case. I became interested in K-pop uh, mainly as a way to understand the profound transformation of South Korea in the last three decades or so. And I thought the popular music industry exemplified these trends in very vivid fashion. I think it has to do with the fact that uh, many South Koreans believe that this is something very profoundly expressive about South Korea. Uh, and people suggest everything from Confucianism to its kind of collectivist culture. But I, I found that, that, that that's not really true. And uh, most South Koreans are extremely poor at identifying the profound revolution in the way they think and live their lives. So one small example would be the plastic uh, cosmetic industry, which is that you know, 30 or 40 years ago, it was completely taboo. It was just unthinkable that you would mess the body that your parents gave you. But now people think it, you are honoring your parents precisely by making yourself more attractive and more beautiful as you can be. Uh, AKB48 is a particularly interesting phenomenon because, um, as I suggested, they actually are not valued because they're great singers or great beauties, but because they're completely ordinary. And there's something I think that's very expressive about the valorization of the ordinary in Japanese life. The people are increasingly inward looking they are actually not wildly ambitious as their parents and grandparents. And uh, in terms of popular music, uh, I, I found it interesting that these devout followers of AKP48 were sometimes often uh, very right-wing nationalist uh, people. And so uh, I thought that it would demonstrate uh, different aspects of contemporary Japan.